this video we are going to take a look at the use of pedigree charts uh, specifically for this video autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive traits and how to use the pedigree charts to figure out genotypes of particular individuals a follow-up video will be made uh, in discussion of X linked traits a couple examples there so the way pedigree charts work is that that we have a, a way to show uh, familial relationships with individuals. Uh, males are usually signified with a box and females with a circle. A sexual union between a male and a female is a horizontal line and offspring from those are going to be shown like this is a line down from that horizontal line and then a connector to each of the individual offsprings. And in general, the offspring furthest to the left is our firstborn, uh, the next one is a secondborn, thirdborn, etc. Um, there's probably some variations in that depending on how you want to put together those particular pedigrees. Let's take a look at how we can use pedigrees to figure out genotypes. Uh, we're going to be talking about autosomal dominant traits first. So autosomal dominant, remember autosomes are body chromosomes, so we're not talking about the sex chromosomes. The sex chromosomes are a little bit more complicated. Um, when you do the autosomal traits, this is just traits that would be on normal chromosomes 1 through 22. Um, what you have to look at here is that you, you got to have a coding for individuals that have the trait. So the trait that we're looking up here, I don't know, this could be something like eye color. Uh, it doesn't have to be diseases or anything like that. So um, we're showing um, over here in the upper right, if a person has the trait that we're interested in, uh, they are colored in red. And since it's a dominant trait, they have to have one dominant gene. So what we do know about this is that individuals without the trait must have the heterozygous recessive genotype. In this case, I'm going to label them R's because capital R and lowercase r look very different. So the first thing you can do is you can go through your pedigree here. You got your top generation here, and then you got your middle generation, and you got your third generation down here. We can go through and we can look at all of the individuals that are not colored red, these blue colored individuals, and we know that their genotypes have to be little r, little r for every single one of them. So we can mark those right off of the bat. Now, we, we got to do some thinking here on these. The ones that are colored red have to have a big R, but the question is, are they capital R, capital R, or are they capital R, lowercase r? Are they homozygous dominant, or are they heterozygous? Well, if we take a look at these two parents up here, they have children that have little r, little r. And they have the particular trait they're interested in. So if they have the particular trait, they have to have a single big R. And in order for their children to get two little r's, each individual parent up here in the first generation must have also a little r. So both of these parents have to be big r, little r. Because that's the only way they could have the trait and then pass on the, the little r's for their children to not have the trait that we're interested in. Uh, we're going to skip ahead over here and we're going to take a look at um, this individual. This individual right here has the trait down here at the bottom. It didn't come from the father. The father right here did not have the trait. who's little r, little r, which means that the mother has to be and has the trait, so she has to have a big r. But she also has to have a little r because the only way for this offspring down here, this, this girl, this firstborn girl, to be little r, little r, is as if this mother is heterozygous and has big r, little r. Since this individual here has the trait, she has to get the big R from the mother, and the father can only give a little r. So this individual right here has to be big R, little r. So that brings us to the last two that I haven't touched yet, and that's the second-born male and the fourth-born female in the second generation. What genotypes are they? Where they have the trait, so they have to have a big R, but I don't have enough information. I need another generation or some more data to figure out what their genotypes really are. I know they have big R, but they could be big R, big R, or big R, little r. They could be recessive, or I'm sorry, they could be homozygous. Um, I'm sorry, they can't be homozygous. Well, yeah, they could, sorry. They could be homozygous dominant, or they could be heterozygous. So we don't know the complete genotype until we have offspring information. And even then, you've got to have the right kind of offspring information uh, in order to figure those out. 
So two of these, we really can't figure out their, their particular genotypes. So this is the dominant trait. We're having the dominant trait gives you the trait that you're looking at, the dominant allele. Let's take a look at a autosomal recessive trait. Now, the only difference here is that you can have carriers. And I've, I've went ahead and I've marked the carriers because it got too, too hard to mark the carriers um, later on in the presentation. Um, so we're kind of cheating here a little bit here. Uh, but you can end up figuring these out. In the case of autosomal recessive traits, the, the individuals with the trait have to have little r, little r. They have to be homozygous recessive. So what you'll do when you first start solving this is you will go through with every person that has the trait. Now this is different than before. You went and looked at everybody that didn't have the trait, but in autosomal recessive, you're gonna go through and you're gonna look at everybody that has the trait because everybody that has the trait has to be homozygous recessive, little r, little r. All right, so now that brings us to how can we figure out the uh, other particular individuals. Um, we have in the second generation, offspring that do not possess this particular autosomal recessive trait. So that means they must have a capital letter R from each of the parents, but in order for the second and third, I'm sorry, second and fourth child to have the homozygous recessive trait, each of these parents has to have a little r as well, because they would get one little r from one parent and the other little r from the other parent. So the parents themselves have to have big r, little r. Now, they have the trait, but they are carrying, thus why they are half-shaded, they are carrying the recessive trait with them. The recessive trait is not shown, and it'll show up every once in a while. All right, so let's take a look at uh, this individual right down here at the very bottom. So they have to get a little r from the father, but they are not showing the trait. They're not solid red. And I've already indicated them as being a carrier. So this person right here must be big R, little r, because they do not have the recessive traits. So they have to have the big R, and they only can get a little r from the father. That must mean this individual right here also has a big R, because that's the only way any of the offspring could inherit a capital letter R, is if this mother right here was able to give that R. And since this daughter right here is little r, little r, she has to have a little r here for the mother. So that means she is a carrier of that trait. Now, the ones that are colored here in blue, we got issues with. Because the blue, what, what our problem is, we know that they don't have the recessive trait. So they all have to have a big R. We just don't know yet information to discover whether they have another capital R, or whether they inherited the lowercase r, the recessive trait, from their parents. So those three we are not sure about. So back when we started on um, the last slide, what you do is you start with the individuals that would do not have the trait. So the ones that are colored in blue here do not have the trait. Those have to be little r, little r when you're dealing with autosomal dominant traits. And then when you go on to the recessive traits, this time you go ahead and you look at the individuals with the trait because there's going to be a little r, little r. So you notice in both of them, you're trying to figure out the ones that are homozygous recessive because there's only one way for those to have that particular trait. They have to have little r, little r in all of them. So you always start with that and then you have to backtrack and you have to find out information about the others. Uh, I hope that helps with uh, pedigrees and uh, there'll be a follow-up video where we go through X-linked chromosomes.